desperate attempt to keep the star from collapsing. And as it does so, it's starting to use a new trick, though, electron degeneracy. In order to know what electron degeneracy is, we first have to look at normal gases. Well, what's a normal gas? Of course, it obeys the ideal gas law, shown here with a simple relationship between the pressure, density, and temperature. Now, the Sun and all stars are fully ionized gases, but the ideal gas law is a good approximation for what goes on inside them. This diagram shows the effect of what's called the Pauli exclusion principle. It states that no two particles in a system, fermions here, can have the same six quantum numbers of momentum and position. And by fermions, suffice it for now that this includes electrons, protons, and neutrons. Each of these six quantum numbers corresponds to a physical location denoted by the canonical x, y, and z directions and to the momenta in each of these directions. Each momentum is determined by the particle's de Broglie wavelength. In addition to these six quantum numbers, fermions get yet another quantum number, spin, which has two states, either one half up or one half down. Why exactly it's one half and why it's up and why it's down, that's a different conversation. Suffice it to say that this diagram is a radical simplification of all this, showing only one spatial freedom and one energy state corresponding to the momentum in one direction. We're just looking at the position and the momentum in one physical direction, say x, or perhaps left-right. These are the available quantum states in our super simple model. And we're only going to stare at the quantum states for the electrons. The protons and neutrons have their own boxes. In each box, or quantum state, the arrow up or down indicates that electron's spin. Now, if we really want to do this right, we'd need a six-dimensional cube to get all of the quantum states in the entire phase space. But as you can see, a normal gas has a pretty good distribution of high and low energy electrons with a mix of ups and downs. There's lots of freedoms for electrons to gain and lose energy and lots of places to go. Basically, in a normal gas, all the available quantum states far exceed the total number of electrons in the available six-dimensional phase space. An electron can easily lose a lot of energy, come to a near stop, but it'll likely get bonked by another electron and jump up high again soon. There's just a lot more open slots than there are electrons. So what happens when you take the energy away from a gas? It gets colder and more compressed. Here we see a very, very, very cold fermion gas. As the temperature drops, the lowest energy states start to fill up. Because fermions in the same system cannot be in the same quantum state, that is, some combination of location, momentum, and spin, they begin to stack up. Some of these electrons retain a lot of energy, even though they've lost all they can. This is because there are no available lower energy states. At temperature equals zero, none of the higher energy states are filled, and all of the lowest ones are completely filled. And this is what we mean by a degenerate gas, and it most certainly does not behave at all like an ideal gas. And it's not just as if it's extremely cold. Extraordinary pressure can force the electrons into this degenerate state, but the result is the same. The inherent heat energy that was in the random motions of the previous ideal electron gas has been sucked out of the system. This provides an extremely strong lattice structure, which can now provide the support for the star's weight above it. Remember, this is just the electrons. The protons, neutrons, and other fermionic nuclei could, and in the case of stars, are, still in a near-ideal gas law state. The heat energy of the electrons was simply sapped into the layers above the core to keep the rest of the star aloft. In sum, a degenerate gas can occur at extremely high densities. And when it does, this new gas law takes over. This is the equation for a degenerate gas. I want you to note a few things. First, the only two macroscopic variables are the pressure, on the left, and the mass density, on the right, to the 5 thirds power. All the rest are numbers and constants. M sub E is the mass of an electron. M sub H is the mass of a hydrogen atom. Z over A represents the ratio of the atomic number, Z, to the atomic mass number, A, of the nuclei in the gas. Importantly, the pressure is now independent of temperature, and increased compression doesn't lead to heating. This means that the objects could, in principle, be very cold, but still have enough pressure to maintain a state of hydrostatic equilibrium. The inequality across the bottom shows the crossover point between the normal gas and significant degeneracy. Here, T is the star's core temperature and rho is the core's density. 
If this ratio is less than that number, then it's mostly degenerate. Currently in the Sun, the Sun's core is not degenerate since that ratio is about 5500, but something like the PUP, the white dwarf orbiting Sirius, is. Its value is extremely below the boundary, so it's fully degenerate. As for solar mass stars, when they begin to climb up the RGB, or the red giant branch, their cores contract and cool off and get increasingly dense. Eventually, these cores become fully degenerate gases. In fact, a core such as this actually cools down in the center of the star, getting a temperature inversion from the outer core to the very center, principally due to neutrino losses from deep in the core. 